Welcome to the Capitol with Representative Shane Jett. Shane, it's an exciting week up here. A lot of things coming to conclusion. That's correct, and there's a lot of high temper, short fuses, and sleep deprivation is kicking in right about now. <laughs> well, that's why we like to have you, man, because no holds bar. Unfortunately, this time through, not a lot of the legislation that you proposed has been, I guess, heard. Talk to us about the process. The process, you, you have eight bill limit, mm -hmm. and everyone is right now jockeying for position. A lot of people are saying, Shane, I don't have any of my bills being heard, and I'm furious. Some people are saying, I've only had two, and they're like, well, be happy, you got two, I got zero. Um, right now, I have two pieces of legislation that has survived the process, and we're going to be heard, Lord willing, on the floor this afternoon before three o'clock. After three o'clock, it's over, and then I have to look for other vehicles. But again, nothing's dead until the last day, uh, last Friday in May, because the, the, the bills that we have, are, mm -hmm. you can consider them to be like containers or vehicles, if you will, mm -hmm. and you put language in it. And so if that language doesn't work, you find another vehicle and you put it in. It's kind of like you have to find a host, <laughs> like, like, like Alien, you know, they're finding a host, they can go from person to person. So right now, I've got two bills that are potentially going to be heard. One of them was heard last night and went down in an embarrassing flames. Uh -oh. And um, you know, I went, went around and started talking to the people and they said, well, Shane, I didn't understand it. I'm tired. My bill's not getting heard. I'm angry. Yeah. Or they'll say, they'll ask a question and I'll go, well, if you'd been listening to the debate or my explanation, that answer would already be made. Well, now that I understand it, I'll vote for it. So I have to capture the vote. And that is if a vote goes down, I have a, a window of a, of a few seconds to raise my hand and say, uh, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to serve notice that at some future date I might choose to reconsider the vote by which House Bill 2229 failed. And you have to say it just like that. And then they say the record will so note, and that gives you about a 24, 48 hour window to give the body a chance to hear it again if they fail to understand why your particular piece of legislation was a sweeping reform and would move Oklahoma forward in light years, which is the case in my bill. <laughs> <laughs> which is the case that you always believe. That's why you bring them up. That's why I'm here. Because you want to push things in Oklahoma forward, right? Mm -hmm. Well, talk a little bit about those issues. What was it yesterday or last night? And what's the second one today that you hope to have heard? Well, the one we did last night was the Honorary Consul General. And this is a complicated issue that I've studied, and, and it's a lot to digest, and that's part of the problem. But there are embassies in Washington, D.C. that have relationships with the federal government and their home country. Then there are consul generals that are that divide up the entire United States into regions, and they process all that paperwork and assist the embassies do that paperwork. Now, each state has the right to have one honorary consul general in that state to assist the relationship with people from Oklahoma and the embassy and consul generals. So, if you have those individuals here in Oklahoma, they are, if you will, a glorified goodwill ambassador. Okay. for the state of Oklahoma to develop relationships. So what happens practically, why, am I, why do I care about this, is because if you are coming in with a trade delegation to a region that includes Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Miss, uh, Missouri, we have an opportunity to contact that trade delegation and say you need to come to Oklahoma and look at site selection opportunities right here. That creates jobs for FFA kids that are graduating from high school, kids that are graduating from college, and instead of going to Texas to get that job, bring them here. Now, we can't compete with Texas or some of the other states that have a larger population or have more money than we do. We just don't have the industrial base. But I believe that Oklahoma can compete anytime, any place, anywhere if it's dependent on quality relationships being developed because people are friendly here in Oklahoma and we know how to develop quality relationships. So I believe we can compete head to head if we have the people on the ground here. So I'm trying to move that forward. And my goodness, you'd think that I was <laughs> trying to cede control to Mexico for our sovereignty over U.S. highways or something. Well, and that brings up this from just hearing that this is this is how i picture what's going on is that you would like to see a person in oklahoma represent the state to f really foreign entities who are searching areas within our region to locate or relocate business that's right that's exactly right is that all did i miss something no I wish you'd have presented my bill yesterday. Probably had a better hearing. <laughs> <laughs> Shane, just slow down I mean, when you're less talking. Less caffeine. <laughs> but it's hard not to get excited about something that you know, if you put it into statute, when you're gone 10 years from now, mm -hmm. People in Oklahoma are going to have jobs as a result of it. There will be opportunities that will still be happening, and that's why I ran. I, we have a limited time, 12 years total, and I want to make sure that when I leave, Oklahoma is still moving forward 
because I've done something that matters and I've done something that will live on. This is one of those bills. And the way in which the younger kids that you described would have jobs, Shane, is that because they would be assisting this concierge general <laughs> or consultant we'll go general. Your word. We'll go with your word. <laughs> um, what, what happens is if they're looking, if if they're looking for a location in the United States, they're going to go to the website and say, who do we have relationships with now? Mm -hmm. Those consul generals okay. will have their email, telephone number, and their name. Right. So they will automatically be on the email list of the first inquiry. We would like to look at site locations for a manufacturing operation. We have a golf club manufacturing. We'd like to set it up somewhere in this region. Do you have interest? Yes, we do, and we have someone, the person, to pick up the phone, call the Commerce Department, call the governor, set up the meeting, and get it started because the relationships are already in place. But okay. we, it's, it's a two-way road. They're looking for opportunities. They want to be in a $12 trillion market, but they're not going to choose Oklahoma unless they know Oklahoma exists. And why not have someone here that's a cheerleader, a, a goodwill ambassador, if you will, for the state to promote those opportunities because those manufacturing jobs will be moved somewhere. Mm -hmm. Those business opportunities will be somewhere. And we don't want our kids to graduate from OU, OSU, OBU, St. Gregory's, and have to go outside the state to get a job that we could have got here had we had the relationships in place. All right, that sounds good. Now let's move on to your second piece. What What is going to be heard, hopefully, before three? Well, again, and I was appointed as the, the chairman of tourism and international relations. And so under that purview, I'm looking for ways to promote international business and international opportunities for Oklahoma because, again, it means we have jobs and we can compete with the states around us. So the other thing we're doing is we have foreign trade zones. These are zones that are designed to provide incentives for companies who want to come in and establish a manufacturing operation or for Oklahoma companies who are importing or exporting to give them preferential tax treatment so that they can stay here and not move those jobs to Mexico, move those jobs out. It helps the businesses who are here and it helps encourage businesses to move in. What I'm putting to that formula is a statewide director to help coordinate the marketing efforts between the five trade zones that we have. Because right now we have Bob Portis who is in the, um, the Port of Muskogee. Uh, we have uh, Scott who's in the Port, I'm sorry, Bob Portis is in Contusa, Scott's in Muskogee, and we have one in Oklahoma City. And they have their hands full with what they're doing. We need a point person who says, ah, oh, you have this logistic need, you need to talk about this opportunity, these logistics opportunities we have. Oh, you need air freight, you need to go to Oklahoma City. You need to bring it in by barge, you need to go to Tulsa or Muskogee, uh, to these different ports. We need someone that can coordinate those efforts. One of the problems is this is a federal asset that we have, and we spent more money on this getting this asset together under Robert S. Kerr um, than they spent on the Panama Canal, and we're utilizing it way below its potential. It would be like having the uh, having the autobahn, but only using it for bicycle races. That's <laughs> the equivalent to what we have. So we need someone that understands that and can market it as a package deal to encourage people to come into Oklahoma, matching them up with the logistic opportunities we have based on their logistic needs. And again, creating job because creating jobs because you're creating more industry interest in Oklahoma. And not only bringing them in, but also giving competitive edges to those companies who are here that are working under the pressure of foreign companies that, that may be importing things in or Chinese products being imported in, gives them the edge so they can continue to be competitive and compete with the global market. Because at the end of the day, if those companies close down or move somewhere else, we lose jobs. FFA kids don't get those jobs. Well, and talking about competitive, that's what it is all around here, that's trying right. to get the things heard in, in before deadline, uh, and all of us can be a part of that. As this deadline approaches, go to the, um, to the state website, okhouse.gov, and view the bills that mm -hmm. have passed onto the Senate and have come back to the House, and email, email, email to let your voice be heard, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, and always make sure that they know that, that where you live and the contact number to get back in touch with you because if you're a constituent, they're going to care a lot about that because you're the one that sent them there. And uh, we are hearing from all kinds of people elsewhere. When we hear from a constituent, we really stop and pay attention because you're the guys we're representing. Potentially five emails can shift a representative one way or the other. You and your friends, all of us, need to engage and make a difference for Oklahoma. Shane, Jet, thank you very much as always. Always a pleasure, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you.